Yo, what is up, people? It's Z Karma here, and welcome back to another boring math video here in Borderlands 3. Today, I bring you guys another legendary and dedicated drop rates video. In these videos, I farm bosses for an extended period of time and collect several variables of data to show you the drop rates percentages that I experience. The goal of these videos is to give you an idea of what to expect when you decide to farm for yourselves. So today, we will be taking a look at Kilovolt's drop rates. His dedicated loot pool contains the Transformer Shield, the 9V SMG, Moxie's Bouncing Pair, and the Monarch Assault Rifle. And in this video, I will show you the drop rates after 500 kills on Mayhem 10. And here is all the data that I collected. I collected the number of world drops, and then the number of each type of drop, which will include the number of pistols, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles, snipers, launchers, shields, grenades, artifacts, and class mods. And also, the number of dedicated drops, along with the drop rates for each specific dedicated drop. So before I get into breaking all this information down, I wanted to let you guys know that all my farming is recorded live over on twitch.tv slash zkarma. So if you want to watch all of this live for other videos, a follow will be appreciated. Link will be in the pinned comment below. Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Starting off with world drops. After 500 kills on Kilovolt on Mayhem 10, I got 1380 world drops. Which means that on average, I was having around 2.76 legendary world drops per kill. This is actually not too bad. It's on the mid range compared to other bosses, for example, Grave Ward and Agonizer are better in this department because they drop anywhere from 3 to 4 world drops per kill. And Kilovolt is more comparable to that of Captain Trunt, which dropped around 2.6 legendaries per kill. The only problem, of course, is that Kilovolt does have a small immunity phase, but it can be countered on console by dying off and have Kilovolt respawn without save quitting. Anyway, aside from this, I also recorded exactly what drops I got from Kilovolt regarding these world drops. Out of the 1,380 kills on Kilovolt, 33 were launchers, 120 were snipers, 126 assault rifles, 130 pistols, 134 shotguns, 138 SMGs, 165 shields, 170 grenades, 181 artifacts and 183 class mods and as you can see I put them in order from least amount of drops to the most and right off the bat the launchers stand out out of the 1380 world drops only 2% were launchers and I know launchers drop the least that's normal but I was definitely not expecting such a low percentage then if you look at snipers assault rifles pistols shotguns and SMGs they are all pretty close drop rates. The only one that surprises me are the snipers. I thought that the snipers will have a higher drop rate than all the other weapons, simply because I see too many ASMDs and Malik spoons. Anyway, moving down to shields and grenades. This to me is expected. I always notice more of these drop than any type of weapon. And finally, artifacts and class mods. As you can see, these dropped at the highest rate and surprisingly though, they both dropped a very similar amount of times. Same when you compare grenades and shields. And I personally doubt that this is a coincidence, as I've seen this happen time and time again. Although this game obviously has RNG, there's an incredible amount of consistency because the more often than not, the drop rates are relatively the same. So now let's move on from this and on to dedicated drops. In 500 kills on Kilovolt on Mayhem 10, I got 190 dedicated drops. This means that the dedicated drop rate for Kilovolt was about 38%, which is a higher rate when compared to Captain Trant, who had a 33.6% drop rate. Anyway, out of the 190 dedicated drops, 41 were the 9V SMG, 61 Transformers, 45 were the Moxie's Bouncing Pair Grenades, and 43 of those were the Monarch Assault Rifle, which is the Mayhem 6 and above exclusive. And as you can tell, all of them had a pretty close drop rate, except for of course a transformer which is a little higher. And since the transformer is a very popular shield, I think it's worth mentioning that I did get every single anointment you can think of. So if you want to farm, I don't know, a 50% elemental transformer, I guarantee that you'll get it. So anyways, let's just move on to what most of you guys are interested in, the Monarch's drop rate. 
it dropped at an 8.6% rate, which means that theoretically you should get at least 8 or 9 within 100 kills. I also recorded the amount of monarchs that I got in each set of 100 kills, and they were as followed. I got 5, then 11, then 6, then 13, and finally 8 for a total of 43. And as you can tell, the lowest was at a 5% drop rate, and the highest was a 13% drop rate. This is the exact reason why I farm bosses 500 or more times. It is the only sure way to get accurate results. If I only farmed him 100 times and I got 5 like I did at the start, I would say that I have a 5% drop rate, but that would not be accurate. Because in probability, the more trials you do, the closer the empirical probability will be to the theoretical probability in which, of course, theoretical is the actual chances of the drop rates, and the empirical probability is the outcome based on actual experimentation. So in theory, if I farmed kilovolt 10,000 times, my results should be even more accurate. Anyway, moving on, let's just talk about the drops I got. One thing I noticed was that 90% of the monarchs that I got had a 4 pellet count. So if you're looking for an 8 pellet variant, you will have a more difficult time of obtaining it. I can't tell you the exact chances of getting an 8 pellet monarch, but based on my results, it was obvious that the 4 pellet count was more common. The only way to know the exact percentages is to either dig into the files or get at least 100 or so monarchs to drop before I can be certain. As for the anointments that I got, I had some really good ones. Amongst them were the 100% Sentinel Cryo, 150% Urad, and consecutive hits anoints. I also had several of the 50% elemental on next to magazines and a couple of the 40% radiation damage for Amara. And guess what? Yes, all of those were actually for pellet count, except for this 250% face cast that I got, which is 8 pellets. And also, if you didn't notice, all of the ones that I showed off were actually kinetic. The reason is because the probability of getting a kinetic monarch is 59% and the remaining 41% will be for all 5 elements. So technically, the chances of getting a Fire Monarch, for example, are 41 divided by 5, so 8.2%. And if you want to calculate the chances of getting the Monarch with the right anoint and element, just multiply the drop rate of 8.6% by the chances of getting the right element, which is 0.082, by the number of anointments, so it's 1 out of 55 possible anointments, somewhere around there, I'm not sure exactly, but let's just say 1 out of 55, we end up getting a 0.0128% chance to get the right monarch with the right anointment and the right element. Yeah, that's pretty low, and I'm not even counting magazine size or pellet count. Anyway, I will just go ahead and leave this video here. Hope you guys found it helpful in some way. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button for me as that would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to subscribe for more Borderlands 3 content, that will be awesome as well. Hope you all have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.